This is the DC motor configuration of my CNC version 3.2. The motors I am using here are from old printers. What type of DC motors can be used to move the axis? Well, that depends on the type of H bridges you have to control them. Here I am using double H bridges with the L298NIC that can switch up to 2 amps of continuous current. First thing to be done is checking the stall current of the motors. Note that you can destroy an unknown DC motor quickly when connecting the device to a too high voltage, especially when recording the stall current. Have a look on my project page to get more details. Switch your multimeter to the highest current range, that is 10 amps at this device and plug the red cable into the high amp connector if needed. This motor consumes almost 500 milliamps at 5 volts ...and 1.6 amps at 12 volts. thus you can operate this motor at 12 volts with the L298N bridges. The maximum electric power consumed by the motor is 19 watts. A gear is needed to boost the torque of the DC motors. The base element of the transmission is a disc with a diameter of 20cm that was cut from plywood. I have used my drill press as lathe to trim the disc. Be careful when using your drill press that way. The chuck is press fit on the shaft and could fall off when applying a too high side load on the mechanics or when pushing from top on the disc. Put the table of the drill press close underneath the disc and use the rest to trim the shape without pushing too hard. The second gear of the transmission is a rubber roll from an old printer. It gets press fit on the shaft of the motor. A short piece of the insulation of a cable is used to make it all fit tightly. The motor is mounted on a lever that presses the rubber roll at the motor shaft on the plywood disc with a rubber band. Because of the large diameter of the plywood disc, only slight pressure is needed to build up enough friction to make the transmission work. With a 10mm rubber roll and the 20cm plywood disc, we get an overall transmission of 20 to 1. You can vary the transmission by enlarging the diameter of the rubber roll. Here I am using a roll with a diameter of 50mm resulting in a 4 to 1 transmission and so in a higher speed of the machine. If you can slow down the axis noticeably by hand, the output torque of the transmission is too low. For this motor a 6.66 to 1 transmission is the best compromise between speed and torque making the machine run reliably. You can use different types of motors to drive the axis of the CNC, but try to find motors with similar electric characteristics. Keep in mind that the weakest motor rules the machine speed. The maximum speed of this configuration is 4 seconds per 1 cm or 2.5mm per second. When driving the table in a 45 degree angle, the maximum machine speed is just 1.2mm per second. That's because the microcontroller moves only one motor at a time, thus both motors are turned on and off in a fast pace during movement. The software is in an early state and there are optimizations to be done to speed up the machine in that mode. The movement of the motors is controlled using rotary encoders as demonstrated in a previous video. The sensor discs are cut from cardboard and covered with paint to make them water resistant. The teeth are covered with adhesive tape... ...from both sides. For each axis you need two optical sensors arranged side by side and the teeth and gaps of the sensor disc must be wide enough to block or pass the infrared light of both sensors simultaneously. Those sensors can be found in old printers and I have demonstrated in a previous video how to find the pin configuration of unknown devices. 
If you buy new sensors, have a look at the datasheet to find the resistance values needed to operate your devices. After wiring up the sensors, make a test if they work correctly. Connect ground to minus of a DC voltage source and plus to plus 5 volts. With a multimeter, the reading must be clearly below 0.5 volts whenever the sensors are open... ...and nearly 5 volts whenever the infrared light of a sensor is blocked. Use shielded cables to connect the sensors to the microcontroller and connect the shield to ground of the Arduino. It took me one day to find that the cheap unshielded cables I used first caused lost steps of my machine. USB cables or CAT6 network cables usually are shielded. I have insulated the sensors with hot glue after ensuring the correct function of the devices. The sensors are kept in place with a stripe of perforated metal and some more hot glue. During operation of my machine, I found that the slits in the sensor housings collect all the dust on the sensor disk over time, resulting in malfunction of the devices. With plastic covers cut from packing material and put into place by hot glue, that source of error is eliminated. After wiring the sensors and mounting them on the machine, make another function test. Connect the black cable of the voltmeter to ground of the Arduino and the red probe to the input pins of the sensors. Same as before, the reading must be below 0.5V with the sensors open... ...and close to 5V whenever a tooth of the sensor disk blocks the infrared light. Next, the motors are connected to the H bridges. I am using wire with a 0.75mm cross section that is good for currents up to 6 amps. Each motor is controlled by the Arduino using two input pins at the H bridges. The 5V connector of the double H bridges is for the logic levels only. The devices I am using have an onboard 5V regulator that can be enabled by a push button, thus this terminal is not connected. The motors are powered by 12V through the H bridges. The voltage source I am using is an old computer power supply. The green cable must be joined with ground to activate the device. Black cables are ground. Red cables plus 5V... ...and yellow cables plus 12V. Time for the first test run. You can command the motors through the terminal software using the cursor keys. Let's start with the X-axis. After pressing the right cursor key, the motor should move for one step. If it starts spinning continuously, press the reset button on the Arduino board... ...turn off the voltage supply... ...and swap the terminals running from the accordant H-bridge to the motor. Restart the software and try again. Now, the motor should turn for one step, with each cursor pressed to left or right. Check the Y and Z axis in the same way. Now, check the direction of movement. When looking at the front of the machine, the table must move to the front when pressing cursor up... ...and back when pressing cursor down. If the movement is reversed, swap the cables running from the H-bridge to the motor of the Y-axis... ...and the two cables running from the Y-sensors to the Arduino. When pressing the left cursor, the table must move to the right... ...and when pressing the right cursor, the table must move to the left. Sounds weird, but consider that the router moves into the opposite direction relative to the table. Last thing to check is the Z axis. It must move down when pressing the page down key... 
and up when pressing the page up key. If the movement is reversed, you should already know what to do. Mark one tooth on each sensor disc and move all axes 1000 or more steps in one direction... ...and the same number of steps into the opposite direction. If the markings on the discs are at the initial position, the Arduino hasn't lost steps and everything is ok, if not, you must find the error. An optional feature are the homing switches that are made of three optical sensors. One for the top position of the router motor... ...one for the Y axis... ...and one for the X axis. The router motor can be turned on and off with a relay. The coil of the relay draws a current of more than 200mA, which is why a transistor is needed to amplify the output signal of the Arduino. Another transistor switch is a pump that is used for applying coolant. More information about the coolant functionality will follow, pure water isn't the best fluid for all materials a CNC router can process. Time for another test run. I'm cutting special gears with round teeth that are calculated by the software. The software needs parameters such as the router diameter, the diameter of the center hole and the number of teeth. Here I'm using a 1.6mm router bit and the gear has 50 teeth with a 5mm center hole. The router is diving deeper into the material for 1.5mm with each run... ...and after 3 runs, the gear is cut from the 5mm acrylic plastics. The machine is still too slow. Well, let's upgrade to more powerful DC motors. This motor draws a stall current of 2.2A at 12V, which is too much for the L298N bridges. You can reduce the maximum power delivered to the motor by pulse width modulation. In order to get a maximum stall current of no more than 1.8A, the duty cycle has to be limited to 80%. Well, to get the maximum power the motor can deliver, we need high power H bridges. The BTN7960 bridges shown here can switch currents of up to 43 amps, but there is just one full bridge on a board, thus three boards are needed for the machine. The wiring differs slightly, but same as before, two input pins are needed to control a motor. The transmission of the high power motor is composed of two gears that were cut in the previous test run. With the higher torque of the motor, the transmission can be reduced to 3.3321 using gears with 15 and 50 teeth. The maximum speed is 10mm per second, but I have to do code optimization to get that speed during operation of the CNC. Let's do another test run. Here I'm cutting 0.8mm aluminum with a 1.6mm router bit. The cutting speed is lowered by software or else the router bit would crack, thus we could also perform this test with the low power configuration. The test piece is a new sensor wheel. With a tooth width of 4mm, the diameter is less than 80mm while still having 30 teeth. The working principle of this compact arrangement of sensors and sensor wheel is explained in another video. Same as before, a full turn is divided into 120 pulses. CNC version 3.2 was successfully used to evolve its own design. You can get the templates and software on my project page for free. If you like this CNC, use the donate button on my pages to keep my open source, open access projects going. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!